Yesterday, we got Fortune's Keep in Warzone, a brand new map here to explore and master. And for all the Resurgence lovers out there, this map produces a ton of new opportunities as well as a ton of new obstacles. So having Marathon ran Fortune's Keep all evening and all night, I wanted to share with you some tips that I've had that exponentially helped my play experience in securing more kills and more wins. So today we're breaking down these tips and tricks for you. So as we go along, drop your thoughts below. What would you add to this list of tips? Naturally, we can't cover absolutely everything you'd ever think of, but we're all here for the same reasons. So do be sure to drop your tips to help your fellow community members out. If you enjoyed the video, you find it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on the video. And if you're new to the channel, do be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all things Warzone, tips, tricks, and loadouts, Modern Warfare 2, and anything Call of Duty related. If you'd like to join us on that road to half a million subscribers while staying up to date with all of that, I'd love to have you in the community. And finally, with Season 4's introduction yesterday, if you've yet to pick up the Battle Pass or you'd like to pick up something else in the in-game shop and you'd like to support the channel a little further, consider using creator code ESPRESSO in the supporter creator function. It's an entirely optional way to support the content a little bit further but again, is entirely optional, so do not ever feel pressure to do so. But if you do, tweet me a picture. I'd love to shout out some of your generous support in upcoming videos like these legends on screen. But anyways, let's talk about Fortune's Keep and some of the best tips to dominate on the new map. So starting at the beginning, let's talk about early game. Let's talk your movement, positioning, rotations, landing, all that kind of stuff. First, early game, the biggest thing is you want to find a landing spot that you feel comfortable with. There's a lot of new areas here, given that it's a brand new map and everything, so finding that one spot for you might take a little bit of experimenting. But the big key part is to find what is comfortable to you. For me, I like to jump right into the action. My squad has been maining keep, that main castle on the map. This usually will have about two to four, sometimes five other teams that land with us, but that's what my squad is comfortable with. High octane action right off the rip, looking for fights immediately. That's not for everybody, I get that. So the first thing I'd say is to assess what you're feeling. Do you want to fight right away, loot up, or kind of have a combination of both? For high action locations that will give you gunfights and engagements right off the rip, I've been seeing Keep, Vineyard, maybe Town from what I've played in my night of grinding here, but then places like Terraces, Gatehouse, Overlook, Graveyard, Grotto, and Lighthouse, I'd say are kind of like middle tier action ground locations where you'll have maybe one, max two other teams that'll land here on average. So it gives you a little bit to warm up that aim, but also still a little bit that you can end up getting loot right off the rip. But then if you just want to say quietly loot by yourself and get ready for those engagements mid to late game, that's that's where I'd say camp, cove, and bay have all been relatively quiet from the start, for looting at least. I will say that while you may not be looking for action, the cave system of Grotto and the surrounding buildings of Keep are filled to the brim with loot. So whereas places like town, I didn't really have a ton of luck here when I dropped there, and it's usually a hot location. So some of those more dense areas might not necessarily equate one-to-one -one for the best loot. But first tip, find what is comfortable to you and your squad. Now, for those that decide to land hot at any of those hotly contested areas, the first thing that I'd say is kill then loot. Looting and trying to find that perfect gun to take an enemy down in a fight can often lead to that time where you're scrambling, you're trying to find something else, you're running around, and that'll put you in a vulnerable position. If you land down the corridor from somebody, grab whatever gun you may have and at least be conscious, if not 100% ready for a fight. Sure, you can still keep looting, but don't put the thought out of your mind that you might have a gunfight coming. So even if you find something like an SVT or something lackluster, just be ready that if they do push you, you can have that leg up because you'll be ready for the engagement. They might not know where you are, but if you listen for their audio, even with a weapon like an SVT, you can still take players down. So in those pinch situations, kill, clear the area, and then finish looting to find those perfect items or cash for a loadout drop. One thing, once you loot up, once you get your stuff, and then you start making your way around the map, almost everything is scalable, and that is incredibly important to know, because if you're a fan of parkour utilizing jump spots, this map is quite literally for you. Just from the first night of play, I've probably found at least a dozen, maybe two dozen incredible jump spots that are insanely helpful. So while the enemy may have the high ground on you, you could close that gap, and if you're in close enough proximity to them, you may be able to end up gaining the high ground and advantage on them without them even realizing where you came from. To that degree, if you guys would like to see more on this so we don't turn it into a hard change of subject in this video. If you'd like to see a jump spots video, feel free to let me know in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to provide. And then finally, talking about our sort of rotations, movement, and everything like that, play for and watch those rotations on each zone. Whether it be out of points of interest, kind of predicting where players will go if there's one way or another that looks safer, you can kind of predict that flow accordingly and cut off enemies where they may not be expecting it. But also, when you take a look at just the zone, there's always going to be those locations where they're not going to cut through an open field if they don't have to. So you can then position yourself in your 
your team accordingly to then pick off any stragglers. If you want to say sweep the outside of the map with a zone and clear off anybody that is riding zone, that's a great way to gain some advantages as well. Now, moving over into another subject of gunplay and engagements, kind of bridging the gap here between our rotations, positioning, and all that kind of stuff, but mixed in with the actual gunplay elements of Warzone, the biggest thing here that I'd say right now is that high ground is just about everything in a lot of the engagements you'll end up taking. Rebirth has some verticality, of course, some points that are very annoying. Prison rooftop, Warden's rooftop, chemical, lighthouse, control rooftops, the water tower, but inherently, Fortune's Keep has more. You have a four to five story castle at the highest peak with various points of interest that have two to four stories to them. Town, my earliest impressions of this, I wasn't really a fan because it's a more denser version of what feels like the center of the map on Favela from Modern Warfare 2. Just rooftops sloping downwards that if you're to the east, you can have a look down on everybody. There's so many different type buildings to weave in and out of, and it's just super claustrophobic. So that design plays well for some, but not really me. So kind of finding again where you're comfortable in landing, where you're comfortable taking those engagements, but high ground will absolutely be a part you want to take into consideration with that. Verticality and having the height advantage will always be crucial. We've touched on it before in other tip videos here, so I don't want to harp on it too much, but the advantage of high ground simply comes down to you being able to dictate play. If you break the armor of your enemy who's on lower ground, you force them to then retreat or be left out in the open. If you, though, get your armor broken on high ground, you can just simply go crouched or prone behind the ledge or whatever you're overlooking, giving at worst case like a five to seven second head start for the enemy to push you. But you'll still end up being able to dictate that play by having the high ground still. It just forces engagements from that enemy perspective, and for them, it's hard to break. Now, I also will say that whenever you're going into engagements here in Fortune's Keep, surprisingly speaking, the ground loot is actually kind of okay. Honestly, some of the ground loot this season and with the introduction of Fortune's Keep, I can't speak for the future of this if you see this video like two months down the line, but as of this video being published, the ground loot, at least at season four's launch, isn't half bad. There's a few Marco variants, the new SMG that does really well. There's an auto Blixen variant where, as compared to last season, that was something that was available in burst. So this can allow you to grab things like restock or tempered right off of your first loadout if that suits you properly. And assuming you don't find any of them as ground loot perks to combine on top of the loadout you end up choosing. So so if you're one of those people that likes to take a perk other than overkill first, this season's pretty good for you. Now, I will say in terms of gunplay, weaponry to choose, one big thing, and especially when you want to dominate, is pay attention to the meta. And listen, I know that using the same weapons over and over and over again can be bland and boring, but if we're talking about dominating the new match and experiences, there's just statistically speaking, better guns to get the job done in situations. It'd be one thing if every single gun had the exact same damage, bullet velocities, damage ranges, and all that kind of stuff, but if you're trying to give yourself the best opportunity to succeed, to get high kills, secure wins, using a Cold War 74U, the Modern Warfare FR 556, you're just going to put yourself at a disadvantage. We're going to have a full guide here of the best guns to use for Fortune's Keep. I want to say tomorrow evening, pending my ability to grab all the footage necessary, but a lot of what has been the meta still is the meta. The NZ-41, bar, STG even to a degree, even though on paper it got eviscerated, though in reality it didn't really, the Blixen and others. Those are some great choices for weaponry here for this. Moving on into a different category of tips here, utility play. Utility is incredibly important here within Fortune's Keep and as it normally is with the Warzone experience. Tip number one on this subcategory is buy, buy, buy. And I'm not talking about in sync, but instead buy as much utility as you possibly can. One thing right now that is incredibly useful is the UAVs. Whether intended or not, it sweeps from the west to the east of the entire map, not just that 200 meter radius from the center of your player. So that means you get essentially an advanced UAV effect for simply calling in a traditional UAV, though with this, ghosted players still are protected at this point if they are moving, of course. Then one thing to consider for your loadouts in terms of utility is do you use stims, snapshots, or something else? Personally, I don't really see too much benefit to adding a heartbeat center to your loadouts. I definitely think that stims and snapshots right now are the best options to go with. Stims, of course, allowing you to get out of some certain situations, getting some speed boost, but snapshots just giving you the information you need on where enemies are. And with restock, they're still kind of broken. So I'd highly recommend adding either of those two to your loadouts. Then finally, in this utility play category, one thing with the adjustment to season four 
on the fire sale is that loadout drops are now discounted as well. So if you need to regain, you can end up getting a loadout for a little bit less. So make sure you take advantage of that while you have the opportunity to. And finally, to round out this video in terms of our tips on how to dominate here, this is going to come down to some strategy and team play. First and foremost, I'd highly recommend playing with at least one teammate, at least one until you learn the map through and through. I was immediately turned off to the map because my first matches, I played solo, which I love solo resurgence on Rebirth. But with Rebirth, I knew how that map flowed. I knew rotations. I knew the ratty locations to check. But in Fortune's Keep, being that it's brand new, I got absolutely blasted by a guy camping on the edge of zone my first game. And to that end, it was kind of annoying. But team play is always helpful. Having another set of eyes, maybe three at max on top of yours, just gives so much more useful information on being able to call out and find where players are. And speaking of which, clear comms is the next tip that I would recommend here for team play. One of the things that if you go into any stream of a super high level player, you'll definitely notice outside of their ability to say read flow of the situations, have good shots and accuracy, it's likely their clear comms that their teammates and them will provide. This allows them as a squad to have as much information as possible, immediately recognizing situations, how they'll change, where players are, and everything like that. So having as much information as possible is absolutely crucial. Make sure you're ending up giving your teammates as much accurate information as possible. If you don't have a mic, you're playing in game chat and the other team is either muted or whatever, use your ping system to end up calling out players, but just make sure that you have your clear comms, whether verbal or in game with the systems in place. Another big tip is to do not engage unless you're ready to win that gunfight or at the very least, take on the challenge. There are quite a few moments already in Fortune's Keep, just the way that players have stacked up, that I've had those certain situations where it's like, take them out or let them pass. Those kind of stealth approaches to games that you'd see in like the old Modern Warfare campaigns. So if you feel confident in your shot that you can take down an enemy, absolutely take it. But with how many people are stacking two, three, four players all in one location, make sure that you have the ability to do that. And finally, the last thing we'll talk about in terms of strategy and team play is to utilize contracts, either from just using the new item like the black market buy station contract you can end up getting getting some stuff like foresight or i think specialist bonus even at one point or just to complete things like big game bounties where it marks a player's general location and then if you kill them it gives you that advanced uav for me and my squad that's usually how we are unless we're regaining it's the bounties 1000 percent we may not necessarily have a uav but that'll at least give us a general vicinity of where a player and likely his teammates are by being marked with that bounty which fun fact standard bounties will not mark an enemy or activate if every squad has had one player marked by late game big game bounties however are forever they'll mark the final player even if it's a 1v1 or like a 4v1 or something like that on the enemy team it just goes by the criteria of who outside of your team in the rest of the lobby has the most kills so it'll mark all the way till end game just as a little heads up here for that but anyways that's where we're at here at this that is my tips that i'd say to use to dominate fortunes keep of course a lot of this stuff being more high level stuff more strategy more ways to outplay your opponents as opposed to simply just pure one-on-one -on -one gun skill that's a little bit harder to dictate in terms of tips and tricks but hopefully this can help you out in some way shape or form so let me know your thoughts down below are you guys liking fortunes keep so far how many kills how many wins have you had so far since the launch let me know down below but if you enjoyed the video do me a favor and drop a like on it and if you're new to the channel hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing we're getting all things warzone season four tips and tricks best class setups and loadouts as well as modern warfare 2 content we've got you covered here on the channel for all of that so if you're interested i'd love to have in the community that's it thanks so much for watching i'll see you guys later take care and peace.